Okay. So, uh, <clears throat> good afternoon. Uh, this is the open meeting of the Madiket Area Plan Committee of April 7th, 2023. It's being conducted remotely pursuant to Chapter 2 of the Acts of 2023. Uh, for this meeting, uh, it's going to be video conferencing by the Zoom application on the town's website. Um, the agenda meeting uh, notice uh, has been posted on the town website, and there's also directions on how uh, the public may participate. Um, just uh, we all know we're all used to it now, but it's a couple of things we got to go over just to, to make sure that we uh, do everything correctly. Um, uh, everyone uh, from the public must register to participate. Um, all folks uh, on the discussion today uh, must have their names identified on the screen, which everyone is. Uh, the chair, who is Diana, will be uh, um, conducting the meeting. Um, all uh, questions will go through her. Uh, she will uh, go down through the agenda and work through uh, the process. Uh, remember when, uh, you know, raise your hand. Uh, uh, we'll take those uh, questions or comments uh, um, as the chair uh, weaves them into uh, the process. Um, just remember to uh, that you are on a Zoom call, and uh, if you do have uh, something on your screen uh, at some point, it may end up popping up uh, that other people can see it. So um, just a word to the wise on that. Um, that being said, uh, we'll take... Uh, a roll call, and if everybody will uh, respond, so you can all unmute so that you can respond, uh, we will do that. And I will do this uh, alphabetically, hopefully. Diana Brown. Here. Uh, 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 uh. Rita Hafenrapper. Here. Bruce Mandel. Here. Michael Maynard. Here. Kitty Folksman. Here. Kathy Slattery. She's muted. Kathy Slattery. You're muted, Catherine. Yeah, I'm not even sure if she's sitting at the desk. Let me see if I can unmute her. No, I just sent her a message to ask her to unmute. Hello. Oh, thank you so much for joining Hello? us. Hello. Hello. Thank you. We're just doing a roll call, Kath. Thank you. Can you? Thank, Thank you. you. Okay. Bye-bye. Um, I mean, not bye-bye. Not bye-bye. Thank you for having okay. me. And uh, Lars Soderberg. Here. Yeah, I think that is everybody. Joe Topham. Joe. Yeah. Here. Okay. Um, that is everybody that's here. If somebody uh, joins late, I will uh, let you know, Diana, um, so that we can get them uh, logged in. Thank you, Bill. And thank Bill, thank you for manning the Zoom for us and reading the open meeting rules for us. Um, everybody, thank you for calling in, especially on a holiday weekend. Um, I wish you all a happy Passover and a happy Easter. And hopefully this meeting will not be too long, but we haven't had a, an official meeting in quite a while and a lot has gone on. So I just wanted to take the chance to give everybody a brief update on what's happened so far. And then also um, Michael will go through the survey number two, which is um, ready to go. So just in terms of our actions to date, um, to refresh you, um, our original, our existing Matica area plan was completed in 2006. So it is sorely in need of an update to account for everything that's been going on since then, plus future considerations including coastal resilience, water quality, open space, erosion, sewering mataket, swimming pools, short-term rentals, building density, growth, and zoning, to name just some of the top items. And as we've been talking 
you know, the goal of the Matica area plan is really to maintain and protect Matica's low density and rural nature and to provide guidance to homeowners, town committees, builders, and other people um, who are interested in Matica. The MAP work group was officially approved by the Nantucket Planning and Economic Development Commission in March of 2021. Um, and as requested, we put together a mix of seasonal and year round residents to represent the entire Matica community. Um, we also expanded the work group um, and area of the Matica area plan to include Fisher's Landing, the Linda Loring Nature Foundation, the Nantucket Land Council um, properties, the Nantucket Conservation and Land Bank properties, and those representatives have been very helpful as key property owners within the Matica area. The proposed area boundary that we sent to the MP and EDC has not yet been officially approved, but we're working with the idea that we want to gather input from as broad a view of Matica as possible because um, we're all affected by many of the same things. And so we're generally looking at the Matica Harbor watershed as a guideline for our area. We've, once we were officially approved, we got the work group together. We started talking about priority topics. Um, people talk, identified their interest areas for the Matica area plan and we reviewed key inputs, including other area plans, um, other area plan surveys, and very importantly, the coastal resilience plan, which certainly has um, impacts for Matica. In June of 2022, we did our first survey to gather community input, and we surveyed about 600 members of the seasonal and year-round Matica community um, on their feelings about several areas of Matica. We got about a 27% response rate, which was great for a survey. We then, working with the Matica Conservation Association, the Nantucket Land Council, ACNOW, um, and the principal group completed a density study to look at the um, impact, the potential density impact of sewering Matiquet and losing the restrictions that we currently have from the health department of separate of um, 10,000 square feet per bedroom. And that had some fairly dramatic um, density implications for what could happen with Matiquet. We communicated the results of the first survey as well as the density study to the whole Matiquet community via our via the Matiquet Conservation Association newsletter, which goes out to that um, database of about 600 people. And now the next step will be um, doing survey number two to ask additional questions of the community. We had promised the community with our first survey that there would be multiple, maybe two or more. Um, survey. So we are coming up with our second survey now. And the, one of the main purposes of this meeting today is just to review the highlights of that survey. And the results of all of this input, um, as well as any future input that we gather, will be incorporated into the Matica area plan, which we hope will be a guiding document for the next 10 years or so. Um, I really want to thank the survey subgroup who has done an amazing job on both survey number one and survey number two. I have no idea how many hours they've put into it, but it has been a lot of hours. And that group is Bruce Mandel, David Madigan, Lars Soderberg, Michael Maynard, Leslie Forbes. And thank you guys all very much for doing your, such great work. And unless there are any questions, I will turn it over to Michael to talk about survey number two. Okay. Uh, I would just add Tom Erickson has been also very uh, engaged in the survey work. Uh, Thank you, Michael. Thank you. Um, this will be brief. Uh, this is the intention here really is to uh, just give you an overview of what we are doing with survey number two. And then um, not to get into this, the specific questions, because the survey the draft is still in draft form and uh, it's been distributed uh, for review to uh, the Madigan area plan working group uh, and then uh, ultimately will be distributed uh, probably next week. Uh, it'll be open for about four weeks. Um, it'll go to all of the people who received the first one 
Um, that's uh, 600 plus members of the Madica community. And as uh, Diana pointed out, um, we view the west end of the island, we're calling it Madica, but we're really looking at the west end of the island, which includes those other areas, conservation land, uh, Fisher's Landing, uh, Smith's Point, um, and so forth. Uh, so in summary, um, here, here are notes that, that uh, on what Bruce and uh, Lars and I uh, have put together. Uh, it's just a quick summary and then feel free to weigh in with questions. So as you all know, but I think it's just important to rephrase this, the town is updating all of Nantucket's existing seven area, air plan, uh, area plans as required by the state. The original plan, Madigan Area Plan created in 2005, 2006, is currently being updated as part of this requirement. The intent of our process uh, is that community members will have input in developing this updated Madigan Area Plan. We are gathering input via surveys. Uh, the surveys we feel are uh, important in several respects. They are educational and informational. Uh, there are a lot of people who um, in, in our community are not that engaged day to day in the affairs of, of the west end of the island. And um, the survey um, is aimed at number one being outreach, achieving outreach to the entire community, but also to um, educate them, give them a little context to some of the areas they may not know so much about, so that in answering questions, um, they can do so in an informed manner. Uh, the survey, um, uh, the survey results when they come back in, they are anonymous responses, and uh, they are designed. Uh, we did some consulting with uh, uh, a survey expert. Uh, with the aim of making sure as best we could that the survey um, would be, as I said, be informational, uh, but also neutral in the sense that uh, we are trying to provide information and then ask people's honest opinions in an anonymous fashion um, about their opinions on these, these areas and trying to determine what is of interest to the homeowners um, and renters uh, and uh, how they feel about the future. So uh, in summary, it, it again, our survey is designed to receive anonymous feedback, be educational, informative, and neutral. Um, survey questions are framed in a neutral, non-leading manner with simple yes, no answers and the opportunity to submit comments as well, handwritten comments. As was done with the first survey several months ago, this will be distributed to approximately 650 email addresses uh, with additional distribution to those requesting access. So that um, in most cases, this goes out to a household, but in, uh, in, in the given household, if there are more than one individual uh, who wants to respond, uh, they will be provided with copies of the survey as well. Um, the results of the first survey had a very high response rate, as Diana pointed out, and it made it very clear that our community prioritizes our aquifer, the Madigan uh, Harbor area watersheds, as well as preserving the rural, quiet, low-density, historic character of our area, including open viewscapes, very important to folks, uh, access to beaches, and the quiet enjoyment of the private property. Uh, the second survey is designed, it's 22 questions, to build on the results of the first survey to address in more detail community commentary on some of those high priority issues. In particular, water quality of the watersheds, coastal erosion, which is uh, a, an increasingly important issue and one that, um, uh, uh, our area of the island, certainly because of our exposure, uh, has very heightened awareness, and that has also been heightened by the Coastal Resilience Plan, uh, which the town commissioned and approved uh, in 2021. Uh, increasing density 
was a very high priority issue from the large majority of respondents in the first survey. Um, so our set of survey questions is really meant to gather greater understanding of how our community members, their families and neighbors feel about not only what's going on today in Madikot, but how they would like to see it uh, go in the future. We all recognize that change is uh, part of life um, and we watch Mother Nature having an impact on our community as well. So um, this, this survey is intended to gather as much information as we can to uh, be able to provide an informed um, report on where we are for the, Matic the next Madikit area plan. Uh, we want to reiterate responses are anonymous uh, and we're going to keep the doors open on the survey for about four weeks uh, and do our best to follow up with the distribution to encourage people to uh, to respond. If it turns out um, after this survey that new things surface or there's some question about areas that require more detail, there's a possibility we might do a third survey that would probably be smaller and more focused on a few areas. Um, as, as you all know, the uh, state uh, has a format for the survey and we're expected to um, address uh, each of those areas in the format. Our survey is focusing on the highest priority areas, uh, but ultimately we have to uh, uh, fill out uh, a comprehensive report according to their, the, the state format. This will ultimately go to the uh, NPEDC uh, for uh, their review and uh, hopefully approval. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Michael. That was very helpful. I would just um, correct one word slip that you made, which was that the state format is not for the survey, it's for the Medica area plan. I'm sorry, that, yeah. That we create. Good point, thank you. Um, Kathy keeps losing her connection. She's um, was trying to stay in, but she wasn't able to. Um, uh, Joseph, did you have your hand up for a question? I do. Um, just to piggyback on what uh, was just said um, by Michael, that this report that is going to be put together um, really is kind of a, a yardstick or a, a guideline of what and how the NPEDC could help um, the homeowners of Madikit and, you know, my family being a homeowner in Madikit. Um, that we really want to be protecting your rights and your uh, wishes and really try to, you know, work within this parameter and not overstep. So, you know, Matic, uh, Monomoy being one of the seven villages that are coming together, you know, they came together and said, we don't want pools, we don't want SDRs, and we're really listening to that and, and taking that, um, you know, survey uh, to heart. And it's not something that's just going to be thrown away. So. I really think it's important for the 600 people of Madikit to step up and, and get as many people. I know you got 27%, but if that never could go up and get a majority of the voters, that would really help us to say, okay, we know what Madikit wants and what they, you know, you, you rule your own destiny. And I, and I have to be really careful and let you know when I'm, I'm working for the NPDC and then I'm working as a Madikit, uh, you know, homeowner. So that's something I'm really just want to give you guys all a heads up. But this is really important to help, you know, dictate what happens in Madikit. And so that's uh, what I'd like to share. So thank you. Well, Joseph, we're really happy that you have joined this work group and as the MP and EDC representative and appreciate your guidance, both from that perspective as well as a Madikit person. So thank you. Thank you, Diane. I just, well, it's just because of Kitty. I really like working with Kitty. <laughs> it's been a we while. We all do. Since I've seen her. <laughs> <laughs> Thank no, you, I mean, the whole group. I'm, not, I'm joking, but I just saw Kitty's face, so I thought I'd give her a shadow. Um, no, I apologize yeah. for not having my screen on, but I'm traveling. So I just, I know if I have my uh, video on, um, that I'm probably going to lose connection. So that's why I've shut it off. 
So you get to enjoy a little picture of me when I was two years old. So thank you. Bye. <laughs> Can I ask a question? Joe mentioned the issue of, though 27% is a good number generally on surveys, um, I heard him say majority, which would be almost twice what we got. It, is that a, an, are you telling us something, Joe, when you say majority is important? Because that's a high bar for surveys. And, and if, if we don't get that, does that mean our recommendations are less influential in the overall process? Uh, Madam Chair, through you, uh, I would say no, but it helps. I think that if you can get as many Madigan residents to really take this seriously, you know, I mean, if it's going to take 10 minutes to, to really control what happens in Madigan, I think it's really important that everyone understands that. Um, you know, and I know that Bill's email uh, that comes out every so often is really great in keeping my entire family informed of what's going on in Madigan. Uh, and town uh, issues, but I really think if you can get a vast majority of people, and I don't know if you have a stand at Madigan Marine or the, the West Ender or, or, or not West Ender, sorry, um, uh, but, you know, just somewhere that everyone could kind of go and fill in that report, I think is really important. So my point was just as many people as you can get to fill that out would be great. But um, I would say that the NPDNC would not think less of if you, again, you know, hit the high bar of 27, I'm just saying it's the, the, the more the better, um, because if something does come up, you, you'd, you'd hate to have a couple of people come out and say, we're against this. And our thought is if you can get the, you know, Bonomo, I think they got a higher number. Um, it really just helps us, us to say, this is what everyone, the vast majority of Madigan wants. And this is, we have to honor their wishes and, and, be guided by that document that will be created by you all. So that's what I was trying to say. Okay, that's helpful, thanks. Bruce, did you have a comment? Oh, yes, I did. Uh, in our consultation with the professional survey folks, uh, they were rather impressed with a 27% return rate. They're, they're quite used to seeing between 12 and 14%. I might add that the survey is not the only mechanism that we have been using to reach out to the community. Uh, at the annual Manica Conservation Association, uh, we gather comments and suggestions and have discussions about this. Uh, and the last full uh, summertime meeting we had was attended by over a hundred community residents and uh, a few visitors as well. So uh, a 50% survey response would be just you know off the charts in terms of uh, response rate. And I don't wanna build up any false expectations on the part of NP and EDC, but uh, the 27% return rate in survey one was astonishingly high. And you know we're, we're aiming for similar results. I do like the idea that maybe we put something up at Madigan Marine or Millie's, since they're the only real two common public areas in Madigan that might at least point people to how they could provide input or how they could find out about what's going on and give us input. So I think that's a good idea for the summer. Are there any other questions or comments? Bill, did you have your hand up? Um, take Katie first because she's on oh. the committee. I'm just a, I'm just a hang around. Thank you, thank you. I just wanted to thank the survey committee. I did read through the draft survey, and I thought it was well written and very clear and concise. And I think you'll get some good responses from it. So thank you. Thank you, Kitty. I uh, agree. I thought it was very clear and concise and easy to understand and the helpful explanations at the beginning of different sections I th to Michael's point about education and informing people I thought were really good Mr. The, Bell uh, the, the only point I was going to bring up is um, just as someone who obviously lives out here and, and whatever um, I understand that we're going to try to 
drive the numbers higher on the response. Um, uh, one of the things that uh, has always made me leery of the whole process um, is as we try to be all inclusive, we also, um, uh, for lack of a better term, weaken our soup in that, um, you know, we, we've, we're making sure that we have uh, seasonal folks, year-round folks, and renters. Um, my fear is that if we make it too accessible so that we can drive up our numbers, um, we're going to get some some input that skews uh, the goal, which is automatic at residents um, and owners uh, really looking to have to protect Madigan. Um And so I, I could see that, you know, on a particular evening, uh, all of a sudden, uh, if we had a, a, the availability of folks over at uh, Millie's during a uh, special beer night that uh, everybody would be voting to have uh, Mickey D's and, and the donkeys stand and, you know, and all of a sudden we'd get, well, 90% of our respondents want Mickey D's and Dunkey. So that's always bothered me as we try to be, um, you know, Gandhi of this whole thing and, and get input from everybody. So um, I think it's just something that the committee uh, will need to be aware of as it tries to strive to drive up those numbers. I'll go back to sleep now. Right. Joe, did you have your hand up? I do. Um, yeah, I mean, I, listen, I'm I'm fine if I'm the bad guy, but I I am I don't really care the number or whatever. But it, it's I just think as many people as you can get to weigh in. Um, I'm not as fearful as Bill is, you know, going to Millie's and and having people fill it out. Where mainly it's a yes or no question to begin with. I do know there's a written section that you can add in some comments, but I really think that. If I were Matic Lander, I, I would take this very seriously. I would want to know what's going on. And if, if, you know, I don't think I'd want to see a thousand pools out there happen overnight or anything and have the same press uh, that comes from that, uh, you know, a hot button mechanism. So I really think a lot of people take this extremely seriously. So, you know, I'm just saying as a, as a, you know, sitting member of the NPDC, I think that the, I'm just saying the more you can get, the better. And I'd hate to have a small minority as in, you know, we'll win it where nine members voted that, oh, we don't want the bike path. And I would rather have the vast majority. That's why I'm saying the uh, well, one associate didn't go out to their members. They just, the board said, oh, this is what it is. And I disagree with that philosophy. I think that you should reach out to every 600, you know, all the 600 members and say, this is really important. And, and a member of the NPDC and a, and a land order Vatican is stressing that this is extremely important because it will be, you know, again, the guideline to what happens on Vatican. So that's my point. And listen, if, if you think they're coming in sloppy, okay, well, maybe you say, I'll get you tomorrow or can I come visit you or something? I, you know, but I'm just, I'm not that fearful as Bill is about having a, you know, a, I don't know, call it a polling table or whatever you want to call it, you know, or an iPad sitting there. And you know members walking around in the community, you can just tag them or say, hey, can you give me you know, a couple minutes of your time to fill this question here? So I, I just feel as, you know, if you get more numbers, that's great. If, if we can't, if we hit the 27, as um, Bruce pointed out, that's fantastic and an impressive number. Uh, I just know that it seems like Monomoy had a little bit higher number. So that was my point. And so I, I'm not knocking if 27% came back up, I'm just saying, you know, if we can press that a little bit higher and, and get, you know, quality responses, that's what I'm looking for. So thank you. Bruce? Thank you. You're yes. muted. Um, and and we, need to, we need to recall that our sampling of almost 600 and I think it was 70 some odd was, uh, emails that were sent out and received uh, that sample to achieve 27%, you know, percentages can be deceiving. If, if we had sent it out to 100 people and received 50 responses, we'd have a very high percentage rate. But we sent it out to almost 700 people. 
So 27% is, is, the percentage is a little deceiving in terms of the success of a survey, but when you get to a large distribution like we did, that's what I meant by 27% was deemed to be very successful. Yep, the denominator matters too. Yes, Peter, did you have your hand up? Yeah, I mean, that's close to 200 people, which is a great number. I mean, I think um, Joe's point is the more the merrier. If we if we get 50% of the people responding, that just carries more weight. It's as simple as that. The other thing I would say to Bill's point is, I'm assuming, you know, the concern that people that maybe aren't as invested in Nantucket weighing in on this survey, I'm assuming we can sort through the survey and just present, I mean, you can present everything, but you can also present owners and, and you know, owners as here's what the owners say, mm -hmm. as opposed to here's what everybody that happens to have some stake in Madiket says. And, and to the degree that you're concerned about, you know, maybe short-term renters weighing in on the survey, um, I, I imagine we can sort through the data and just pull out people that have a greater stake in, in Madiket than than everybody that happens to take the survey. To that point, I wonder if we should consider putting any demographic information similar to what we had in the first survey in the beginning of this survey, just to identify who's taking it a little bit better. Because I don't think we should, it's, I don't think we should make the assumption that it's, it's all the same people. It's probably mostly the same people, but maybe we shouldn't make some of those questions repeated. Just a thought. Bruce? Thank you. Uh, the other thing is because the survey is sent out on an anonymous basis or the responses are anonymous, it's difficult to uh, go back to folks who may not have responded and ask them to please reply. But one way around that is after uh, the four weeks that the survey is open, uh, we could send all 600 and some odd people a reminder email to thank the folks that have replied and to urge the others to apply and maybe leave it open for another week. You'll always get something if you do that. I think that's a pretty good idea. Mm -hmm. but, but also adding the, uh, you know, the filters in the front to, so we know who's filling it out, whether they're owners or renters or or whatever, I think that might be useful. Are there any other comments? Well, I want to thank you for your time. And again, thank you to the survey subgroup for all of your hard work on putting this survey together. And I think that if we can, um, you know, look at it once more with any other comments that you've gotten for feedback and get it ready to go out end of next week, that would be terrific. And maybe instead of waiting until the end of four weeks, as you suggested, Bruce, maybe two weeks into it, um, there might be a way to jog people who haven't yet responded to the survey to say, don't forget the survey's still open. And even if we do that another time, you know, right toward the end of the four weeks, it's sort of like fundraising. Every time I send out a letter, I get responses. So thank goodness for that. Um, and so therefore, that it might be good to nudge people a few times. Especially if it's email, because those emails just, as we know, sink to the bottom of your inbox and, and they're gone. <laughs> and so, they're gone. <laughs> having, having I agree with that one. I like a reminder sometimes. Yeah. Yep. OK, sounds good. Um, I don't think we. Uh, I don't think we need anything else on this in terms of next steps. Um, therefore, is there any new business that we need to address? Okay, hearing none, do we have a motion to adjourn? Motion made by Bruce, second. Michael, all in favor, I'll just call you by name. Bruce? Yes. Lars? Yes. Michael? Peter? Yes. Kitty? Yes. Joe? Yes. 
and I vote yes. So thank you very much for your time today. And Bill, thank you for running the orchestrations of the Zoom meeting for us. Take care, everybody. Have a great weekend. Anna, good Take weekend. care of it all. Everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.